What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another reaction video. Today we are reacting to the latest FNAF Game Theory video. It's a Tuesday. Um, I, I didn't think that Game Theories came out on Tuesdays, but I could be completely wrong because I don't know their upload schedule back and forth. This is FNAF Goodbye Father FNAF Security Breach Prediction. So I can only imagine this is about Afton of course, um, maybe about the fact that the pizza plex might be built around something, maybe Fredbear's family diner, things like that. I, I'm hoping for those kind of theories. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of those kind of things going around recently. I think without further ado, let's get straight into this. Bit by bit, we've been working to solve security breach before its launch. And so far, I feel pretty darn good about what we've concluded. Yeah. The reappearance of Glitch Trap and the dual nature of Vanny seem all but confirmed. The repurposing of the toy animatronics still feels uh, very possible. Even not sure about that one. bigger swings have wound up being home runs. Huh. Oh yeah, he predicted music, man. Well, yeah. I think we all did. Um, I didn't believe it at first because of the... Because of the gloves, but it did make sense when we saw it in the trailer. So to suddenly see a character with six legs and clown gloves, this is the closest thing that connects. I would assume because anything that usually has a lot of legs like this is able to climb walls and climb ceilings. I wouldn't be surprised to see this be attacking you from the ceiling or a wall. Yeah, he was bang on. Oh, oh, I called it. Let's go. Music man! So we've talked about the villains, we've talked about the animatronics, we've talked about the plots. Today, with a month left before release, it's time to talk about how this whole thing is gonna Ooh. end. Ooh, fire. Please, come on, fire. Goes live. Since September, Steel Wool Studio has been hyping up the upcoming release of FNAF Security Breach by releasing short clips of an old Freddy Fazbear. They were so good. Freddy and Friends on tour. These four Everyone was hyped like for them every two weeks. Cartoon like 1969 Scooby Doo or 1958's Yogi Bear have been a yes. huge source of information about this upcoming game. With each one hiding a frame or two screenshot of an existing animatronic in the middle of the episode, as well as the more focused reveal of a new mm -hmm. animatronic towards the end. So, in, in the middle of episode. You see glitches showcasing Chica, Roxy Wolf, Monty Gator, our security guard from the game's yep. first teaser, but now with yellow eyes, and these creepy bots, which we later learn in the game's trailer, appear to be the service bots that are wandering around the security. I do think the yellow eyes complex. could be the lighting, the but video, it also could be kind of glitch trap guy, possession. Vanny, and of course, so that's interesting to think about, yeah. The reintroduction of glitch trap, who in the final video can be found by piecing together the upload the purple, 20 purple yeah. and yellow glitches, kind of like a puzzle Probably that was the coolest ideas for a teaser yeah i was just about to say that honestly just a greatest really idea ever back because based on the youtube description for these videos these things are coming from the fazbear entertainment archive mm -hmm. and what are we doing with these old tapes we're assembling them just like we saw with fnaf vr we're assembling the tapes also true assembled glitch true traps. very true yet again we assemble a series of tapes the glitches get stronger upload after upload and boom gold bunny make people go bye bye i don't know if they meant this intentionally or not but still Cool detail. And then just a couple weeks ago, the actual trailer came out and confirmed a lot of what we were seeing. There's all the animatronics, yeah. there's the creepy service bots, there's Music Man! <laughs> For God's sake. Everything that's in he, he's very pumped about Music Man, isn't he? Everything that's been it's a very changed. weird addition to the crew. One thing. Through all the reveals and teasers and trailers, one thing remains a mystery. There is still one teased item that hasn't been revealed. And that is a tentacle monster. You heard that? Yeah. Line? The end of Fazbear in Friends Episode 1, we get this, a sliding tentacle right, slithering yeah. across the screen. And you know it's a big deal because it's simultaneously the first thing they tease, but also the last thing that they're keeping secret. In fact, based on details from the trailer, as well as new clues that have come to light in other parts of the FNAF universe, I not only think I know what that is, but also the whole ending sequence of this I game. think it's, this I think it's a puppet-like creature. Like, like, once again, it has to be. It has to be Charlotte or something. To be true. Well, let me tell you. I'll be even more excited than this. Music man! And speaking of things that get How many times? <laughs> your favorite reject animatronic make his triumphant return. Let me just remind you that new FNAF wear and theory wear are okay. available right now. Okay, these are sick. Live these are very sick. Fantasies in this awesome uh, 
um, I'm not getting any because they're very expensive. <laughs> but they're sick. Or if let's talk tentacles. Across the series, there's only ever been one character associated with long, slimy black tentacles, and that is Nightmareon, the nightmare puppet, who came so out as part of the Halloween so update good. for FNAF 4 way back when I still had hopes that this series would end with <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a fool I yeah. was. And who yeah, what a fool. recently saw in FNAF VR's Night Terrors minigame. This so, I like love it. I love Nightmareon so much. My favorite animatronic is Nightmareon. But I dare not look in that direction. So when you see a tentacle sliding across a staticky screen, immediately your mind is going to jump to this character. Yes. And from a story standpoint, this would also make some level of sense. I mean, William Afton is back in the form of Glitch Trap, so presumably the puppet, this protector of lost souls that stands opposed to him, would try its best to come along for the ride too in an effort to thwart him right. once more. One problem with all this though, Nightmare Own isn't canon. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's complicated. Go figure, it's FNAF I would say it is. There. You see, Nightmare Nightmareon's original appearance in FNAF 4's Halloween update is not The original canon. isn't, but Nightmareon is. Nightmareon was in Ultimate Custom Night. FNAF VR, on the other hand, is And canon, VR, yes. Not in the way you think. This is because FNAF VR is itself a video game produced by True. Fazbear <laughs> So Nightmareon in the world of but FNAF Ultimate is no better than Mario or Master Chief or a Slender Man. It's a video game character, and as far as we know, that's it. It's not an actual active part of the real world lore in that universe. And you see, it's the Did you forget about Ultimate Custom Night? Problem here. Canonically, the puppet or am I just misthinking? The spirit is released in the fire that happens at the end of Pizzeria Simulator. And unlike Afton, who created a digitized version of himself hidden in a video game, something tells me that the puppet was encoding C++ in between giving gifts, giving life. Okay, let me just pause note. right there. Um, I will say, for anybody who watches my channel, um, we are covering this, and we have covered it actually, um, that the puppet might be coming back, and the reason is because of information in a leaked book. So I don't really want to spoil it, just in case you don't want spoilers, um, but basically the ultimate guide uh, may have a little bit of evidence that the puppet may not, the puppet may not have been freed. Okay, Charlotte's soul may not have been freed from the puppet. Um, she still may be in the puppet, and the puppet might be coming back. Like, just like William Afton. <laughs> Always coming back. As the last nail in the coffin here, the tentacle that we see at the end of Freddy and Friends is missing its signature white stripes. True. Are there ways to bring the puppet back? Sure. Puppet mask didn't fully burn away and was found in the wreckage of the FNAF 6 pizzeria, so it's still infused with the agony of Charlie in order to fight against Afton one final time. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But honestly, I think there's evidence to suggest a better candidate for that tentacle, baby. So the final Fazbear Frights book just came out, number okay. 11, Prankster. Okay. And with it came the chance to look I'm not opposed to it being baby, but let's see what he says to help solve the game lore. One big takeaway from the series, we now absolutely know what was inside the FNAF 4 box. It was a person. Don't at me about this one. This is undeniable at this point and nothing you say is going to change my mind about it. Here's why. In Prankster, we get this line during the finale, quote, Jake had found the real homeless girl that Eleanor replaced. As a quick aside here and reminder, Eleanor is this book's stand-in for baby. The real girl had been locked in a trunk in the abandoned building where Jake had originally found Eleanor. Eleanor. Now, this one instance alone wouldn't be enough to make me 100% sure about this, but they repeat it twice. Earlier in the same stretch of like 20 or so pages, the exact same thing happens again. Only this time, it's Eleanor that's locked in the box waiting to pop out. And if those two times weren't enough for you, in the final FNAF novel, The Fourth Closet, Baby hides a person inside True. of a large chest and then goes to steal their identity. Quote from this book, John moved to a large green chest, the paint almost entirely worn off. There was no lock. John knelt beside it, found the handle, and heaved it open, then shuddered, falling back and pushing himself away. Jessica, hmm. yes, moving back to the chest and leaning over. Okay, Jessica, where is he going with this? Trying to listen. It's, it's Charlie, he said hoarsely, in the chest. So three times in the various books of this franchise have we opened up a Two chest times. to find some person well, resting yeah. inside. That alone would be enough to be a trend, but the similarities in these situations continue. Not only does this very odd and 
one very specific thing happen in both Fazbear Frights and the Silver Eyes novels, but both times the person inside the box is Charlie the Puppet, or whatever her equivalent is in that universe. In the fourth closet, it's Charlotte, daughter of the genius animatronic inventor Henry, who tragically loses his young girl and then tries to rebuild her using robots. And over in Fazbear Frights, the homeless girl in the box is named Rennell. Stop me if this starts to sound familiar, but she's the daughter of genius inventor Dr. Telber, who tragically loses okay. his young girl and then tries to keep her alive by inventing Remnant. I'm just saying, whether you like it or not, it just seems like the books are trying real hard to tell us the solution to this one. And that's not a theory. That is me just I'm not 100% on to that, but pattern in the books. I can but see where, I, where you went with that. Comes the yes. ending to the Stitch Wraith story that I've been yammering on about for the better part of two years. And for good reason, this one story, told in short chunks at the end of each novel, has contained some of the biggest lore reveals of any piece of media this franchise has ever produced. It was this story that really strengthened my belief in Golden Freddy. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's also the one that gives us that scene that we just talked about with the box. It even has a lore dump in the final pages where they just outright define what Remnant <laughs> is. So that's why True. it really caught my attention True. when Baby started to do something that was completely out of character. Shooting long black tentacles out of her body. Quote from the book, her eyes bulged. Black tentacles shot from her mouth from her fingers, from her toes. The slimy black vines climbed up the walls, slithered over the floor. Tentacles flew from her and wrapped around his face. Yeah, that, uh, that's new. So we have ourselves Baby, an animatronic that can transform into a believable copy of any person, now also oh, I, to I don't know. Blood tentacles. Yeah, the, uh, the tentacles are made from black blood. Sorry if I didn't mention that before, but, uh, yep. But there's another reason I think Baby's our tentacle monster. It's because I think she's actually our big bad of the game. The one who is really pulling the strings here. You see, back in April, I did three short mini-theories on Security Breach, with one focused on exactly this topic, the return of Elizabeth Afton. At the time, it was a mini-theory for a reason. It was just a hunch with a teeny bit of evidence. But now, that evidence is starting to pile up faster than dead bodies in a pizzeria. And to understand why, we have to make one more trip to the books. At the midway point of our Stitch Raid story, we have our Golden Freddy spirit stand-ins having to equip themselves with the puppet mask in order to fight against a giant <laughs> 15 foot trash rabbit called the Afton Amalgamation. Uh. You're not stroking out, friends. That is the unironic words printed onto real paper and produced en masse yes. for readers to consume. You hear that? Shakespeare is rolling in his grave as we speak. Basically, Afton's spirit had possessed a lot of different objects, and those all fused together with trash in order to form a giant garbage <laughs> Godzilla. Back when I wrote that theory, I had this to say. I am not going to sit here and say that we will at some point in the series be forced to fight a giant trash bunny possessed by a serial killer but now seven months later things have changed and uh yeah it was I Eleanor all along sit here and say that we will at some point in the series be forced to fight a giant trash bunny possessed by a serial killer yep the series about pizzeria themed murders has decided that giant garbage rabbit kaiju is the next logical step in the story that they feel it wants to tell i am so tired now if this was a normal fnaf game then no of course there's no giant trash monster but this is anything but a normal fnaf game. First, we know that Security Breach will have boss battles. This is confirmed True. on the PlayStation blog article covering the game. And if these moments of Monty Gator from the trailer don't look like a boss battle intro sequence, then I don't know what does. Reminds me of the American Gladiators game Assault. We also know that the game's primary mechanic is climbing into Freddy's oversized birthday cake hatch to pilot him around like a mech suit. You don't just include a mecha suit like that in your game if all you're doing with it is stealthing around a mall. You insert that sort of stuff in order to punch serial killers in the that face. would be so epic you know, if we can do that for me is the trailer throughout the freddy and friends teaser images we've seen pictures of the animatronics all right. cracked and broken are they corrupt yes and maybe we destroy them over the course of the night but there's no it's glam rock freddy detail but then the trailer goes and shows us a bit more we see this scene of a broken chica that's attacking us in a tunnel made from garbage now that is a bizarre setting for a game that's set in a mall and according to the playstation store the sewers underneath them all. Trash is just everywhere. So, is this the game that's finally given us what we've all been demanding? Hashtag justice for trash in the gang? Or is it something more? Remember Imagine what I said about the broken version of the animal. The trash just comes alive. Well, one of the main components of Trash Afton are the pieces and oh. parts of other ruined animatronics. I would be surprised if the final boss battle of the game is against a giant amalgamation. Okay, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Which in turn I feel like the baby Vanny see, is the taking 
picking apart the animatronics to build Afton a new suit. so important that they decide to say it twice. First in book six, and then again in book 11. In reality, it's actually Eleanor that's powering the whole thing. So if we do in fact descend down into a landfill to find so a giant So basically Matt Pat is saying Elizabeth is behind it all. I think Vanny is behind it all. Of the shape -shifting baby. But there's one last thing worth mentioning, and that's this game's return. Like, where would Vanny come into this if Elizabeth was behind it all? Docco recently did a live stream to benefit our St. Jude campaign. Docco, you're an amazing and wonderful person. Thank you. Thank you for your support. But whenever there's a Docco charity stream, you know that close behind is going to be some FNAF teasers. And Steel Wool did not disappoint. Yes. They sent him a series of posters, including these three from Fred Bear's Family Diner. The original pizzeria mentioned way back in FNAF 2. These posters alone is pretty sus. Considering game developers don't have the bandwidth to spend a lot of time on artwork that isn't getting used in your actual game. What's even weirder, though, is that the new Freddy and Friends teasers also revisit what appears to be the first pizzeria in episode two. Yeah, on the building's small I can agree with that as well. White striped awnings and wooden interior. But all of that, coupled with the descent into a landfill looking area, leads me to believe that the mall is built on top of the original yeah! diner location. We've actually seen a lot of I called it. The series. I called it. Location and the twisted ones, we have large underground warehouses constructed under existing buildings and businesses and again in the silver eyes yes charlie and the gang into a, a into yeah a in a mall. mall read also pizza plex built around one of the earliest exactly locations Even exactly vr ended with the scene of glitch trap beckoning us to the back room where we then went out the side door towards security breaches mall in the middle of being constructed long story short there is a constant running theme of old places being connected to and buried under new flashier establishments so us going down a trash tunnel in the trailer past Passing old wrecked versions of the animatronics, we have to be headed somewhere. Why not the first ever location where Glitch Trap would be at his strongest? I agree, Matt. Pat. For once, I agree with you. <laughs> the end of the first teaser, notice those fingers, and eventually form into the trash monster yes. that we fight. So that, my friends, is the wild prediction I have for the final act of this game. You descend into the sewers and eventually wind up in tunnels of trash under the building, which eventually leads to the site of the first ever. Game. I can agree with that. Family. Here, where his powers are strong, just imagine leaves the new Afton suit crawling out of Fred Bear's family diner when Knocking you see it, and then that's the final boss battle. Imagine that. And trash around him. We destroy him yet again, only to reveal the black tentacles. It was baby all along. Cue the next game and subsequent 20 installment <laughs> series. But hey, I like that idea. may be horrifying, but not everything that's made of metal has to be. That's for our sponsored disc plate comes in their metal posters are a step above the those are very cool quality we've all seen those are very cool traps been around for and how many fighters <laughs> i'll be lost it um i am i'm a hundred percent with you matt pat on the on the fred bears family diner thing i completely agree like like it has to be right it has to be built on top of fred bears or or an old freddy's location um that would make the game so much more interesting. I would just, as, as I say, I would love, like, the last night to be you come across Fred Bear's Family Diner and out comes Springtrap. Uh, not Springtrap, uh, Afton uh, in a new suit, uh, in the purple suit or whatever. Um, I would love to see that. Not sure about the baby thing, though. Not sure. Um, I like where he went with that idea, actually. I actually really like that plot line, uh, but I don't think it's where FNAF is going. Um, I don't know if it would make much sense. I don't think Elizabeth is evil at all. I really don't. Um, the whole tentacle thing is interesting. I think it's good to note that the tentacles in Fred, Freddy and Friends episode one were kind of wiring. They weren't black, kind of um, kind of black blood. Um, they, they were actual white, it was actual metal, so I don't know if that changes much, but for me, I don't think that's where it's going. I think maybe the tentacle could be a part of Afton, or it could be an entirely new animatronic, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching this reaction. Make sure you subscribe, we will be doing some uh some security breach videos when it comes out and uh yeah i will see you then goodbye